Beauty Style here with another sew along for one of my new fall patterns with simplicity, pattern 8451. Today we're going to be working on view B, the coat. Let's get started. Now if you're new to sewing or you just need a refresher course, make sure and visit the Sewing Basics video linked in the description box below. Watch that, then come back and sew along with me. Okay, so we're going to need obviously the pattern 8451 and in the back of the pattern envelope you will have a list of fabric recommendations, notions you're going to need, any buttons and things like that. You're also going to see your sizing chart so you can pick whatever size best suits your measurements and also make sure that you have enough interfacing. Now let's go over the pieces we're going to need. You're going to need pattern piece number 20 which is the back lining. You'll be cutting this on the fold out of lining fabric. Then you're going to cut pattern piece number 19, which is the front lining, and you're going to cut two out of lining. Pattern piece 14 is our sleeve, and you're going to be cutting two of fabric and two of lining. Then we have pattern piece number eight, which is our welt pockets, and you're going to need to cut two out of fabric and two out of interfacing. Pattern piece number 18, which is the back facing, you're going to cut one on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of interfacing. Pattern piece number 12, which is the upper collar, and you're going to need to cut one of fabric and one of interfacing, both on the fold. Pattern piece number 9 is our pocket, and you're going to need to cut four. Pattern piece number 16 is our sleeve tab, and you're going to be cutting two of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number 13 is the under collar, and you're going to be cutting two of fabric and two of interfacing. Then you're going to cut out pattern piece number 10, which is the back, and you're going to cut one on the fold. Pattern piece number seven, which is the front, and you're going to cut two. Pattern piece number 17, which is our front facing, and you're going to cut two of fabric and two of interfacing. You're going to cut pattern piece number 11, which is our back overlay, and you're going to cut one of fabric and one of lining. And last, you're going to cut pattern piece number 15, which is our carrier, and you're going to cut one of fabric. Okay, once you have all of your fabric pieces and your lining cut out and interfaced, we can start sewing. Now, for the sake of this tutorial and time, I'm not going to go over all of the really basic things like sewing in a straight line. Those things are covered in the Sewing Basics video, and also if you need more help in learning to sew or learning the basics, you can always sign up to sewacademy.com. Okay, we're gonna start with our welts. So what we're going to do is you're going to fold them in half, right sides facing. And I'm gonna pin on both sides. And I want you to go ahead and go to your sewing machine and you're just going to stitch the sides down using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Then I want you to turn this to the right side and give it a press. You're going to do that for both of your welts. Now once you have your welt pocket turned right side out and you've given it a good press, go ahead and top stitch half inch from the edge and 5 8 of an inch basting stitch along the top. Okay, you can go ahead and set your welts aside for just a second. Now go ahead and grab both your front pieces and I want you to do some stay stitching. You should have two dots here. I want you to stay stitch to one dot, pivot, and stay stitch across the other side, at least a full inch on either side. This is going to create some reinforcement. And then we're going to clip towards our dot. So I suggest using a small pair of scissors so that you don't cut too far. And right at that corner, you're just going to clip until you reach your dot, but don't clip through your stitching. You're going to do that for both front pieces. So in your front piece, you should have marked off your bounding box, right, where we're going to be creating our welt pocket. So I want you to take one of your welts, and you're going to place your basting line, that's 5 eighths of an inch from the raw edge, along the bottom line of your pocket. And now what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this down along the basting stitch. So just follow the existing basting line that you have. 
Okay, so I have my welt pocket pinned and I'm going to use my basting stitch as a guide. I'm just gonna sew right over it using a normal length stitch. I'm gonna back stitch. Now I want you to go ahead and trim your welt seam allowance to a quarter inch. You're going to do that for your other pocket welt as well. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and grab one of our pocket bags. And so what you're going to do is you're going to place it over your welt, right sides are facing each other. And you're going to make sure that you're matching up your lines, your small and large dots. And you're going to pin through all thicknesses. And now you should have your bounding box marked onto your pocket. So what you're going to do is you're going to stitch along the long sides. You're not going to stitch at the end. So you're just going to create two long stitching lines along the side of your bounding box. Okay, I'm gonna put my needle right at the beginning of that bounding box line. I'm gonna stitch and back stitch. And I'm just gonna follow my bounding box line. And I'm gonna turn this around. And I'm going to sew the other side. I want you to do your other pocket bag the same way. Okay, now that we have the sides of our bounding box sewn through all thicknesses, we're gonna open it up, but we're gonna open it separately. So I'm gonna do the top and then I'm gonna do the bottom. Now we have this center line that you should have had and then you're going to cut into your corners. So I use my seam ripper to cut initially and then I'll use my scissors. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other side, so turn it over. Okay, once you have both sides open, you're going to push your pocket through to the wrong side. And you're going to give it a really good press. Okay, once you have it pressed, you're going to take your other pocket bag and you're going to lay it over the top, making sure it's all aligned, and we're going to pin. Once it's pinned, you're going to stitch across the top of your pocket bags to stitch them together. And then you're going to stitch around the pocket. Okay, so first we're gonna stitch across the top, but I wanna follow my existing stitching line, so I'm going to turn it over, and I'm literally going to stitch where my existing stitching is, joining both my pocket bags at the top. So be careful. to the other side now and you want to make sure that your jacket is completely out of the way you're only working on your pocket bags now go ahead and stitch around the remaining pocket
Go ahead and do your other pocket the same way. Okay, once you have both your pocket bags sewn, you turn it around to the right side and you're going to slip stitch using an invisible slip stitch to hold your welt up on both sides. Okay, once your pocket is finished, you can go ahead and set these aside and grab your back piece and your overlay. Okay, so I have my underlay and I have my underlay lining. Now, although I'm using a colorful lining for most of my jacket, I don't want you to be able to see that underneath my overlay. So I'm going to use something that's very close to the color of my fabric. Now we're going to stitch across the bottom. Now make sure that right sides are facing and you're just going to pin. Now go ahead to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch across the bottom only using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now you can go ahead and turn it to the right side. And I went ahead and did some under stitching right on my lining side and gave it a good press. And now you can do top stitching and you can do your buttonhole. Okay, so I went ahead and top stitched 5 eighths of an inch from the edge. I made my buttonhole and I went ahead and basted my raw edges together. Now go ahead and grab your back piece. And with the right side facing up and the wrong side of your overlay, you're going to lay it over the top. Now your overlay is going to extend farther than your back piece and that's supposed to be that way. So just move it to the edge, align it, and pin. Now go ahead and take it to your sewing machine and stitch down your sides and your armholes and across your shoulder and neck. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and pin and stitch our fronts to our back. So you're going to grab one front and with right sides facing, you're going to pin down your side seam. And you're going to pin your shoulder. You're going to pin the other front to the back the same way. And now go ahead and take this to the sewing machine and in one straight stitch, you're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance all the way down the side and across your shoulder. Okay, once your side seams and your shoulders are sewn, go ahead and give it a press and then we're going to set this aside for just one second. Go ahead and grab your under collar and your collar. And the first thing we're going to do is stitch our under collar together. So with right sides facing, and aligning your notches, of course. You're going to go ahead and pin. And you're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I went ahead and pressed my seams open. And now we're going to attach our collar, our under collar, to our jacket. So you should have a series of dots and notches that you marked. So you're going to go ahead and align first your single notch.
and we're going to sew between these two dots. Okay, so I have my needle right at my dot, okay? And we're going to backstitch and stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance until we reach the other dot, and then we're going to stop. You're going to stitch the other one the same exact way in between your dots. Okay, so I want you to press this seam open on both sides. Now we're going to sew the rest of our collars. So I'm going to first align my center back notches. You should have two. I'm going to pin there first. And you should have marked what looked like a dart. So what you're going to do is, starting at the end of that dart, I'm going to put a pin. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm aligned on both sides of my dart. And then I'm going to pin the rest of my collar in place. You should have a dot that aligns to your shoulder seam. And now starting in the center back, you're going to sew in a straight line, following the guide of your dart legs, back stitching at the end, and then you're going to start again in the center and go in the other direction. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the center back and I'm gonna back stitch. I'm going to follow my dart leg lines. And now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, once you have your under collar attached, make sure and press your seam allowances down. And it should have no ripples, no tucks, no pleats. It, you want it to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Now we're gonna set this aside for just one second and we're actually going to start working on our sleeves. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the loop for my sleeve tab. So I'm gonna actually fold mine in half as opposed to folding to the center and use a quarter inch seam allowance. Now go ahead, turn this to the inside, press it flat, and then cut it in half. Okay, so I have my sleeve carriers done, and I'm gonna set those aside for just one second. Now go ahead and create two rows of basting stitches along your sleeve cap. And now we're gonna go ahead and sew our carriers down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place it 3 eighths of an inch inside of my dot. You should have two dots. And I'm going to stitch across, turn it over, turn in my seam allowance, and stitch again. So I'm gonna pin it in place and take it to my machine. Okay, so I am about 3 eighths of an inch past my dot. I'm gonna stitch across. I'm gonna turn my loop over and top stitch. Mm -hmm. 
Then I'm gonna fold in my seam allowance and top stitch. Go ahead and cut off any loose threads. You can trim your seam allowance if you wish. And then you're going to go ahead and put your button in, sew your button down, and you're gonna do the same thing for the other sleeve. Okay, once you have gone ahead and attached your loops, now I haven't sewn my buttons down because I haven't decided what buttons I wanna use just yet. So that's why you don't see my buttons. But if you have your buttons, go ahead and sew your buttons down. Go ahead and grab your sleeve tabs, fold them in half, and go ahead and stitch along one short end along the long end, leaving one end open using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, go ahead and turn your tabs to the right side, give it a good press, and you should have a marking for your buttonhole. So go ahead and make both buttonholes. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to attach our tab to our sleeve. So of course your buttonhole is going to be facing your button. So I'm just gonna put it through my loop Pin. And now using a basting stitch, go ahead and just tack this down. Okay, we're going to sew our underarm seam together, so fold it in half, and I'm going to pin up my notches first. And we're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, and if you need to ease this section, I'm just going to make small notches, or you can pull your fabric a little tighter. You also have the option, of course, to create two rows of basting stitches. Okay, go ahead and press your seam open and then turn your sleeve to the right side. Now we're gonna pin our sleeve to our jacket. So I'm gonna take up some of the ease in my sleeve cap. Now grab your coat and the first thing we're going to align is the underarm seam. So I'm going to line that up and I'm going to pin and then I'm going to turn this over so I can work from the inside. Now I'm going to pin my shoulder dot to my shoulder seam. And I'm going to match my single notch and pin my double notch. And you should have another dot along your sleeve cap. A pin there. Now go ahead, take this to your sewing machine, and you're going to sew around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so once you have your sleeves attached, then you're going to go ahead and set this aside. We're going to work on our facing and our collar. Now one quick thing, I'm using a lightweight fabric because I'm using this sort of as a trench, so I'm not putting shoulder pads in. If you plan on wearing this or making this out of a heavier fabric, I would suggest you adding shoulder pads, especially if you have sloped shoulders. It will make sure to keep the structure of the jacket intact. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to grab my facing and my back facing. With right sides facing, I'm going to go ahead and pin up my shoulders. And I want you to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance across and, I, and then after you're done I want you to press your seams open. Okay, now before we attach our collar, we're going to snip into the corner just like we did earlier to the dot. And you're going to pin the same way that you did earlier. So you're going to find your notches. You have double notches for your facing. Pin there. Pin at your dots so you know exactly where to start and stop. And just like before, you're going to stitch from one dot to the other. And you're going to attach the other side of the collar the same way. Okay, just like before, go ahead and press your seams open and we're going to pin the rest of our collar. So, do your back notches.
and you should have a dot that corresponds to your shoulder seam. Now we're going to stitch the remainder of our collar using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, starting at the center back seam, we're going to stitch down one side and then start again and go the other direction. So back stitch. And now we're going to start on the other side. Okay, once you've attached your collar to your facing, you want to make sure that you don't have any pleats or puckers or tucks and we're going to go ahead and set this aside for just one second and grab your back lining piece. Okay, so we're going to make our pleat into the center back. So you should have transferred the broken lines to your fabric. We're going to stitch down using three quarters of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch and I'm starting at the end of my broken lines and working my way up. Now go ahead and press your pleat to one side. Okay, now we're gonna pin and sew our side seams. So grab your front lining pieces and we're going to pin along the side and also across the shoulder. And you're gonna do the same thing for the other side. Now go ahead and go to your sewing machine and just like we did our front, you're going to Sew along your side seam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then you're going to stitch and sew across the shoulder again using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and attach our lining to our facing. So with right sides facing, you're going to pin along the front. So I'm going to pin first one shoulder, matching up my seam lines. I'm going to match up the notch that I have both on my facing and on my lining. And then I'm going to find my dot because there's a little dot here that needs to correspond to your lining and I'm going to match that up and pin. Your facing is going to extend further than your lining so don't think that that's wrong. It's supposed to be like that. And then continue pinning along the front. Then we're going to move towards the back. And you should have double notches, so make sure that you're aligning your double notches. And then continue along the shoulder and down the other front. And now starting at the center back, we're going to stitch all the way down one side and then all the way down the other. Okay, I'm going to start at the center back. We're going to step at the dot and back stitch. And now go ahead and sew the other side from center back down the same way. Okay, once you attach your lining to your facing, we're going to go ahead and grab our sleeves. Now I'm not going to show you how to do this because I've already shown you how to do the sleeve. So of course we're not adding any tabs or loops or buttons to our lining, but you're just going to fold it in half and you're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and remember to gather your cap sleeve with your basting stitches and then attach your sleeves to your lining. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and 
attach our lining to our jacket. So with right sides facing, we're going to do our collar first. So I want to make sure that my collar, my stitching ends in the exact place. And I'm going to put my seam allowances down and I'm going to put a pin there so that I know I need to stop sewing at that dot. I'm going to pin the rest of my collar and you should have notches so make sure that you are aligning your notches. Continue pinning all the way down your front. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to start in the center back. We're going to work our way down to the collar. I'm going to show you exactly where to stop and start and stop. And then across the top of the lapel and down the front and across the bottom. This is a one and a half inch hem allowance. Okay, we're going to back stitch at the beginning. Now we're going to pivot at the dot and make sure that your seam allowance is facing down, okay? And you have a little dot here, so we're going to stitch until we get to that dot. And now we're going to push our seam allowances back up. So now all of the seam allowances should be facing the collar. And you want to put your needle right at that dot. Pivot again. And now across the bottom, we're going to be stitching using one and a half inch hem allowance. I'm going to take my seam guide to make sure that I'm exactly where I need to be. Fold your seam allowance back. Now you're going to do the same thing starting back at the center back and working your way down the other side. Okay, now we're going to, before we turn this over, we're going to trim down our hem. Okay, so right above your hem allowance, you're going to measure up maybe about 5 eighths of an inch and you're going to snip into your seam allowance so that it all lays flat towards the coat, okay, not towards the facing. Okay, so we're going to trim this down to 5 eighths of an inch, but we're going to do it in pieces. First, we're going to cut the top part of the facing and then we'll cut the coat. So I'm just going to turn this so I have a better angle. And I'm going to trim my facing down. Okay, and now we're going to cut our coat, but we're not going to cut it at the same place. We want this portion of our seam allowance still intact. So we're starting 5 eighths of an inch in and then trimming it off. Now go ahead and cut and trim your corner. Okay. 
and you're going to do the same exact thing to the other side. Okay, so now we're going to bag our lining and we're going to leave an opening at least six inches in the middle of the jacket so that we can finish off the hem of our sleeves and of course turn our coat right side out. So first what we're going to do is we're going to, I mean obviously our coat is longer than our lining. So you're going to literally pull your lining down so that your raw edges meet. And when you do that, it's going to create a pleat. And that's okay, it's supposed to look like that. So don't worry about that right now. And then match up your seam lines. And like I said, I'm gonna leave about a six inch opening right in the middle. match up my other seam line. Bring my lining down. And now we're going to sew all the way across, stopping at the middle where we left that opening in between these pins. Backstitch, leaving the opening open, backstitching again here and then going to the other side. Okay, so using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to backstitch. I'm going to stop and backstitch, leaving that opening. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and turn our jacket, our coat to the right side. So through that opening, go ahead and pull your coat out. I want you to go ahead and push out your corners and press your seams nice and flat along the collar and along the front. And then we're going to finish off the hem of our sleeves. Okay, all that's left for us to do is to do the hem of the sleeve and then the rest is basically things you can do on your own like making your buttonholes and slip stitching your opening. So what we're gonna do is I want you to turn your fabric and the lining of your sleeve under just about 5 eighths of an inch. Right sides are facing and we're just gonna pin it so it stays together while we pull it out through the bottom. Now through your opening in the hem go ahead and pull your sleeves out. Try and move all of this out the way so you guys can see. I'm going to remove my pin. And now we're going to be pinning right sides facing, starting with the underarm seam. And then working our way around. Now you're going to go ahead and you're going to sew around using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Back stitch at the beginning. So now your sleeve should look like this. Now you can go ahead and pull your sleeve back out to the right side. Okay, now when you look on the inside, your sleeve is nicely finished and there's no slip stitching needed. Now all that's left for you to do now is to close the opening in your hem and then to mark your buttonholes, make your buttonholes, and then of course sew on your buttons and you are all done. Well, that's all there is. I hope you've enjoyed the sew along. Until next time, peace.